The vast majority of experiments are about taking uh, genes that cause human disease and putting them into animals to try and model the same disease process. We can study the disease in an animal in a way that we can't just study it in man. We can also give these animals drugs to try and treat the disease that may also be effective in man. So when there's clear human benefit, that's the, the, what these experiments are about. The mm. concern is over human characteristics being transferred into animals. Now, now just explain where we are with that. Sure. So what we've done, we've tried to map out all the possible experiments, that, all the current experiments and all the possible experiments that exist and determine the edge of, the, of what's acceptable. So we, we have defined what is unacceptable, what we've described as category three, uh, and then there's some experiments... Well, what comes under category three? Okay, so the mixing of uh, non-human primate, basically monkey cells and human cells to make an embryo. That's clearly not a good idea. Uh, the mixing of, of human gametes, that sperm and egg, with either animal sperm and egg or, or human sperm and egg in an animal to create another uh, organism. That's not a good idea. And perhaps uh, replacing the entire monkey brain with a human uh, brain cells uh, in, in the way that they could actually perhaps acquire a human characteristics. We think those are completely unacceptable. Unacceptable, you say it's not a good idea, is it happening, or are we somewhere in the world, is, is there a scientist in his laboratory who might be about to be doing this sort of thing? I think those are extremely difficult experiments, and I doubt very much whether they're happening. I don't think the technology is there yet. But what we've done is we've looked into the future to say, if science progresses in this way, these experiments are not completely impossible. And we think there should be uh, regulation, a system to scrutinize the experiments that are coming close to that to really put some very clear barriers to those sorts of, that sort of work. What laws do scientists operate under when they're carrying out this sort yeah. of research? So if, if uh, the majority of embryonic stem cells are human, then it comes under the Human Fertilization Embryology Authority. Uh, but most animal experiments actually come under Home Office regulations. One of the uh, experiments looked at human speech, and I, I know mice were involved in, in the yes. research. Now, what happened when that sort of experiment was carried out? Okay, what they tried to do was humanize the mouse gene. That means they changed the sequence of the mouse gene so that it had more human characteristics. Now, it's a very odd experiment, but they, they actually managed to uh, generate these mice, and the mice had a change in the, in the way that they squeak. Now, it's a very long way from saying that a mouse could speak, and, and I think the whole speech process is, is incredibly complicated and not going to be acquired by anything as simple as a mouse. The thing about science is, even for the scientists themselves, things go far more quickly than even they ever anticipate. Certainly the law is not catching up. Yeah. You say it's a long way off, but if you can get a mouse to change its squeak, I mean, how big a step is it then to getting a, a mouse to talk? Or are we talking... Okay, I don't think a mouse will ever talk. They don't have the... Uh, physical characteristics to be able to speak. I'm and glad I, you're smiling a bit because I, I mean think, we're, we are dealing in the realms of... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indeed, I, I, th I think to summarize it very succinctly, one of my colleagues said, you know, if you came home and your, your parrot says, uh, who's a pretty boy, then that's okay. But if your monkey says it, it's a very different matter. 